environmental contamination and pollution is a serious problem that continues to grow because of industrialization and population growth. An average of 310 kilograms of toxic chemicals are released into the air, land, and water by industry every second, leading to approximately 10 million tons of toxic chemicals every year. These chemicals are carried by wind and water and affect the whole world, not just the industrialized countries. When these chemicals make their way into humans or animals, they can cause illness, disease, cancer, birth defects, and even death. Photochemical degradation of pollutants is a renewable, clean, and green answer. It uses the sun's energy to fuel chemical reactions that degrade harmful pollutants. Typically, a dye-sensitized catalyst is required for these reactions. Titania, TiO2, treated with dye that absorbs specific wavelengths of light from the sun, is a very effective and commonly used catalyst. Both organic and inorganic pollutants can be the target of photochemical degradation reactions. MPB is an organic compound that is one of the most used preservatives in the food and cosmetic industries and has been linked to toxic effects in humans. It is very stable, making it resistant to physical and some chemical degradation, but it can be degraded through oxidation in the presence of a catalyst and the sun's energy. Halogenated hydrocarbons are another stable and long-lasting pollutant. They are commonly used for pesticides, dyes, drugs, and explosives. Various biomedical studies have established their toxic effects. Even though these compounds are stable and non-biodegradable, photochemical degradation is once again an effective solution. One source of major concern in wastewater is the toxic preservative methylparaben. A successful way to remove this pollutant from the water sources utilizes UV radiation to oxidize it, which ultimately removes the toxic characteristics from the water. Oftentimes, certain compounds such as hydrogen peroxide and more commonly titanium dioxide or titania are added to the polluted water in order to focus in on a more specific oxidation reaction. This in turn allows for more efficient and effective removal of the pollutant. In order to test the effectiveness of this reaction, 1,000 milliliters of a methylparaben solution at a selected concentration must first be stabilized within a photochemical reaction vessel. Once stabilized, the solution is then allowed to reach a set, predetermined constant temperature. Once all conditions are met, the reaction may then begin. An ultraviolet lamp is turned on and allowed to continuously react with the solution for 90 minutes. Upon completion, the solution is then tested to determine the final concentration of methylparaben in the water. In every trial, the final concentration was much lower than that of the initial polluted water solution, as multiple varying concentrations were tested. Different tests have also been done with varying the concentration of the additive. These results have shown that an increase of the additive, particularly in the titania, successfully increases the oxidative reactivity of the methylparaben in water, which ultimately proves to increase the efficiency of its removal. Another very successful method of degrading pollutants is utilizing titania's ability to split water molecules. The splitting of water increases the reactivity of titania, which has a very high rate of electron-hole pair recombination, along with low reactivity with ultraviolet light. It has been found that in order to increase the photochemical reactivity, titanium nanopore rays can be synthesized, most commonly into 2 cm by 5 cm sheets. These sheets are fabricated in a two-step process involving anodization and sonication. These trials are typically carried out in a quartz reactor involving a three-electrode system. The three electrodes include a platinum foil counter electrode, a saturated silver chloride reference electrode, and a titanium dioxide work electrode. At the conclusion of the reaction, the analysis concludes that the titanium nanopore arrays were much more porous than before, which is a direct result from the radiation. The more porous arrays have more surface area, thus allowing for more reactions to take place on the surface of the arrays. This increase in reactivity yields a greater functionality of splitting the water molecules and ultimately greater rates of contaminant degradation. The overall goal of this process is to remove organic pollutants from water and wastewater. As with most engineering processes, we want to achieve this as efficiently as possible in both time and environmentally desired products and reagents used. Unfortunately, a large amount of energy for this reaction is required due to its activation barrier. 
This makes it very difficult for this reaction to take place under normal conditions. Use of solar energy for this purpose is beneficial in many ways. It is a resource that is extremely abundant and presents little to no environmental or safety concerns. Though ultraviolet light is much easier to harness, it makes up only about 5% of solar energy that is able to be harnessed by the sun, whereas visible light makes up roughly 50%. A semiconductor made with metals such as titania with an absorbed photocatalyst dye is a popular method of harnessing this ample energy source in current research. Titania is widely used because it is effective, readily available, and non-toxic. It is particularly useful due to the redox potentials of its conduction band and valence band, which allows for simultaneous reduction of O2 and oxidation of water or organic compounds. Titania alone is not effective at absorbing light due to its large band gap and also has a high rate of electron hole pair recombination, which is where the dye comes in. In experiment, dyes acting as a photocatalyst are absorbed onto the titanium metal and act as an antenna for the solar energy by absorbing certain wavelengths of light. Electrons from the light are injected into the conduction band of the semiconductor. This excites the pollutant molecules to a higher energy state and creates a charge separation on the band gap of the semiconductor. This causes a formation of radical molecules of the pollutant dye. It is the formation of these radical molecules that brings the starting materials to a higher energy level and allows for this reaction to take place. The dye vastly increases the absorption of visible light while also decreasing the rate of electron hole pair recombination. By utilizing these dyes, we are able to harvest a much larger portion approximately 10 times of solar energy provided by the sun. This also allows for a larger range of organic pollutants to be treated with this method. This method is especially useful for pollutants that are extremely stable and hard to transform. The flexibility of this method makes it a very attractive one for scale-up of photochemical degradation of pollutants, which will hopefully help to decrease the amount of aforementioned negative effects that will result from having these pollutants contaminate our planet. While systems and regulations are in place to prevent this pollution, there is still a large amount of pollution that disrupts natural ecosystems. One way to lower the concentration of these pollutants is through photodegradation. The concept of photochemical degradation is fairly simple. Many organic molecules become unstable in the presence of oxygen and UV radiation. These reactions are initiated by the absorption of a photon. The energy of an absorbed photon is transferred to the electrons in the molecule, and the molecule enters an excited state. These molecules are not kinetically stable in the presence of oxygen, so they decompose into new and hopefully less harmful molecules. There are many questions that will help us understand how to use photochemical degradation efficiently to control the pollution of the world's waters. For example, will degradation occur faster in acidic environments? Does using salt water or fresh water make a difference in the reaction rate? What about using muddy river water? Will degradation reaction rate increase with temperature? Which pollutants break down easiest with photochemical degradation? How do catalysts affect photochemical degradation? While all of these questions are still being researched, there has been extensive research regarding catalyst assistance in these reactions. One of the most common catalysts used is titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide is widely used for photochemical degradation reactions because it is effective, readily available, and non-toxic. 
While the addition of titanium dioxide is not necessary for all photochemical reactions to occur, the catalyst increases the reaction rate for most reactions. This is done by lowering the energy barrier of the reaction. Titanium dioxide can further be modified into titanium dioxide nanopore arrays, also known as TNPs. These allow for optimized surface area and charge separation, which further increases the reaction rate. So far, photochemical degradation reactions have proven useful in lab scale experiments, but there have been difficulties in scaling up the process. In order for photochemical degradation reactions to have an impact on the world's pollution, the scale up must be efficient and cost effective. So why has the scale up been so difficult? In a lab scale experiment, UV light can be supplied equally and evenly throughout a small sample of water. However, on a larger scale, UV light must be distributed over a larger area and throughout a larger volume in order to allow the polluted molecules to react. UV rays must penetrate further below the surface in order to react with these pollutants. This can be difficult when you're dealing with the amount of water that is processed. Another issue with scaling up is the issue of catalysts. While catalysts aren't necessary for all photochemical degradation reactions, the reaction rate increases dramatically in most cases. Using catalysts on a large scale increases the process cost and then raises other issues such as catalyst recycling. So is photochemical degradation the key to cleaning up our waters? There has been much progress in understanding these reactions, but there is more work to be done. Current and further studies will show if photochemical degradation reactions can be used as a clean and affordable way to clean up our waters.